In this video, it all goes wrong. Booker. Right, I've got the big nut off, and there are shims all over the place, the various bits. And I think the easiest way to do this is going to be to put the belt there and then start reassembling the um, pulley system. So that one goes on first, and then that's that belt held in the groove there. And um, then the next bit goes on, etc., etc. Well, let's let's try it. Um, should be a shim there by the look of it. Ooh, wind's getting up. A bit wild here in Wales today. Uh, okay, so that's all back on, but way too much deflection in these belts. So I'm going to have to play around with the shims. I can only assume that the shims put, move the pulleys forward away from the fan and so increase the length between the two pulleys. Seems a rather strange way of doing it, but it seems to work a Volkswagen. So I'll give that a go. I've got all my shims here at the moment. I obviously need them further back to increase the tension. No, I've got it. I've packed that gap out and the belt's got looser. And that's because it's working on the same principle as the transmission. So on that transmission, those pulleys get closer and they have a V on them. And um, that makes the belt rise up. So effectively that one, the belt pushes up, so it increases the gearing. And um, that's exactly the same principle here. So I've packed that full of shims. I need to take shims out and that will allow this pulley to get closer to the fan housing. It'll shrink up. It's a V section you can just see that that'll make the belt ride, ride higher and increase the tension that's how it works so um i should take out my shims and have another go now the annoying thing is you don't know how tight the belt's going to be until you apply full tension to this bolt which squashes the pulleys up and um the back one is looking about right that's looking good but this front one now looks too tight and I don't want to knacker out the bearings on the Dynastar so I'm going to have to take it apart swap some shims around and try again and there we go we've now got just a little bit of deflection on both belts oh, so that's now back tighter again that's attached um, better give her a run I suppose but I might just put things back together again first well once again I am frustrated and um, she doesn't want to fire up at the moment I'm starting to think better plugs might be a good idea so I might try and get a pair of plugs I've changed the coil which improved things slightly but she still won't, just won't quite run and even for everything else on the ignition system I mean it's only really the um, plugs that I haven't changed but you know at least I've got my belt tension I've decided to check the valve clearances because I haven't yet um, I didn't fancy it because the valves are down here quite impossible to get at but I'll see if I can get you in uh, for a better look so yeah th there's the inlet valve at the top uh, where are we um, yeah there it is so there's the inlet valve uh, it's not focusing on that very well and um, the exhaust valve is at the bottom and um, not very easy to get at but you adjust this lock nut here that you can't see and um, you can adjust the gap and I can't even get my feeler gauges in so those gaps seem to have really closed up so I'm gonna reset all the valve clearances to 0.15 mil I think is the recommendation I might go slightly larger or I might go generous on the gaps uh, it can be a good idea with modern fuels certainly do that with the 2CV and um, we'll see what difference this makes Right, here we go again. Ignition on, choke, throttle. Typical engine not wanting to fire up. I've got the um, top off the carburetor at the moment and I've removed the main jet out the middle. Uh, it was really mucky in there so I've been cleaning out lots of gunk to see if I can get this thing running. Uh, it's just some of the muck I've managed to clean out of the carburetor. Here it actually focus on it. Ew! 
So hopefully this will get the old girl running again because she's not very happy at the moment even though I've stolen the plugs from Ellie. So poor Ellie's given up her battery and now her spark plugs in a bid to get this car working. And I think fuel might be the issue now so we'll have a go at cleaning her out. Having sparks coming out the exhaust isn't ideal to most people and um, I'm going to see what I can do about that. And I've rigged up a test lamp so that's connected to the low tension side of the coil and um, is earthing uh, through those handily placed cables. You only have to rest on it and you get an earth, it's great. Um, so we shall rotate the engine keeping an eye, we're waiting for the timing mark on the pulley to come around and show us where top dead centre is. Oh, here it comes. So, there's the pulley marks. So they're now aligned at top dead centre. That should be on. That bulb should be illuminated. Uh, apparently it should be just before it hits top dead centre. And there we go. So it's um, retarded ignition it's effectively sparking too late um, seems to be the case so it really wants to spark probably about there so I'll need to turn the distributor but the distributor won't turn um, there's a bolt just down there you can just see the collar bolt I can free that off and it still doesn't want to turn so I'm gonna have to um, deploy further violence I think so let's get all my timing lamp gear out of the way for the moment and see if we can free that thing off. Hmm, I seem to have damaged the um, distributor, but I haven't managed to move it one millimeter. It's absolutely seized in place. Um, released this securing nut under here, but it won't come off completely because it relies on a scallop in the bottom of the distributor, which isn't lined up with it. Um, this bolt is out completely for the um, adjuster. So in theory, you loosen that and the distributor should spin. It doesn't want to spin, it doesn't want to come out. I'm not really sure what to do next. Oh, T, that'll do. Right, this is the mechanical regulator, um, which um, helps the car to charge. And there's contacts here and down here on the other side. Um, I've cleaned the faces up of those as best I can. This one seemed actually stuck together, which might be why it wasn't charging. So uh, I'm going to cover that up again because this is um, extreme danger, voltage, don't meddle. I'm just going to refit that seal correctly. Um, so you, yeah, you don't want to run this exposed. So I'm going to put the cover back on and see what happens. Right, so will the orange light go out? No. Right, I've unbolted the voltage regulator. Here it is. I believe that's working correctly. But we did have a wire connected here, which is now here. Um, I mean, that was still connected. That's only come apart while I've been tinkering. And uh, furthermore, this fuse, a 50 amp fuse, uh, which seems to have blown in spectacular style. Um, yeah, I wish this thing actually focused where I wanted it to. There we go. So that is a very dead fuse. I don't think I have any 50 rated fuses. Um, 50 amp fuses, that's quite big. Um, I'll have to see what I've got. Well, I can't pretend this is going well, despite many hammers, fire, penetrating oil, 
Um, I've had to take the belts off again, and now the distributor is sort of, um, well, um, there's the, a not very nice word I could use to describe this, and it still won't come off. <sighs> oh well, I shall continue with the violence, there's not much point trying to be careful about it now. It's knackered. Well, there was a bit horrible cracking noise and suddenly it seems a lot looser but it still doesn't want to come out and it still doesn't really want to turn either oh. so I shall continue with some slightly different violence okay this is going really well um, that's the distributor only it isn't because it has snapped off almost flush with the block and that's what remains of the distributor drive which I can't get out because it's still sticking on that piece there joy at least I can get the penetrating oil at it now and heat importantly well brute force and an awful lot of ignorance has got me to this stage I still can't get the distributor shaft out I have managed to completely muller up Pretty much everything. I think I'm almost down to the bottom, but I really must stop and have some food. So, look at the carnage. Of course, the sump's now going to be full of aluminium swarf as well. Ugh. I must say, this trusty screwdriver has put up with an awful lot of abuse. I've been using it as a chisel, as you can tell. Um, I bet when this left the factory in China, it wasn't expecting quite such an awful, awful life of abuse. Poor thing. Well, I've been and had my dinner and come back to it. And um, there's no way of getting away from it. This, this engine is now toast. That's part of the main engine casting for the crankcase. Um, and it's ruined. So... Project Invercar has come crashing to a halt. Uh, this is why I was trying to get it on the road nice and early. So it gave me plenty of time for mishaps like this. And that's a considerable one. I wonder if a 2CV engine would fit. But I suspect it's going to make more sense to go and grab the um, engine out of the spares car. That is rather why I had two cars. It was in case something went horribly wrong. It has. And um, you'll be able to see how I deal with this complete chaos in the next video so yeah thank you for watching I'm sorry this hasn't turned out quite as well as I'd hoped but hey people love a drama uh, don't forget to subscribe before you depart and um, you'll find out how I resolve this uh, I have no idea myself at the moment so I can just say I shall see you again in a future video farewell